I am so, so very happy and proud to have Joel Jamal as our guest. That's right. Now, Joel is the, he is the, the host of Turning Point Australia. That's right. And has been engaged in phenomenal work. That's right. Phenomenal work leading up to the New South Wales state election. Turning Point Australia has published numerous resources online that are designed to help the New South Wales voting public in making an informed decision leading up to the New South Wales state election and pre-poll opens on Monday. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the host of Turning Point Australia, Joel Jamal. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are very happy today to be joined by the one and only Joel Jamal from Turning Point Australia. Joel, welcome to MCJ Report. Now, your pre-poll for New South Wales kicks off on Monday. And my understanding is that you've been very busy in the background, creating and putting forward many resources that can be of the utmost of use to people in New South Wales seeking to make a good decision come polling day. Could you please talk to us a little bit about what you've been up to and what resources you have made available to the New South Wales voting public? Yeah, absolutely. So um, unlike Victoria, unlike the federal election, we only have one week of early voting. It actually starts this Saturday and then Sunday is a day off and then it keeps going from Monday onwards. And we're rolling out the same projects we did in Victoria with a few alterations. Um, this election, it's a very unique one. And we'll talk about it a bit later, but the freedom parties are working together, which is which is refreshing. And they haven't actually run in the same seats. So there's about 60 or so seats out of 93 where there's freedom candidates running. And um, they haven't actually run in the same seats at all, which has been really good. There's only about three where there's overlap. And so that's that's been happening in the background. Behind that turning point and myself, we've been giving them the tools that they need to succeed. So with voters, as usual, we've got our how to vote cards, which defund the majors, empower conviction candidates and uh, get more people elected in the upper house. Um, the second project is we've got a volunteer funnel so we can chan channel our audience into volunteers for the candidates around the state. Instead of going to the party, like in Victoria, we're sending it directly to the candidates' personal email so they get it straight away. Um, the other project we're doing, which is really cool, is we're rolling out the transparency reports, just like in Victoria. They're coming out next week, and they will give people an insight into how their member of parliament voted, what exactly they've been saying in the public eye, and maybe some of the red flags of things that they've said. Um, the fourth project is a preference flow chart. In New South Wales, thankfully, we don't have the group voting ticket. The voter is 100% in control of their vote. They can vote above the line as many times as they want. They control where that preference flows. But political parties do still hand out how to vote cards. And so we've got a card which shows all of the conviction parties versus the left-wing parties and how their how to vote cards work. Are the freedom parties working together? Are the left-wing parties working together? That all comes out. And so that's coming out in the next day or so. Um, and the, the fifth project is uh, scrutineer training to get people upskilled and to help train candidates. And uh, the sixth project is, I've totally forgotten. <laughs> I've forgotten what the sixth project is, but I'm sure it'll, it'll come out as we're talking. That, that's all right, Joel. There's so much on your plate. I'm sure that it will come back to you. Now, these sound like great services that you've made available there to the public. And it is indeed uh, so important for voters to be properly informed before casting their vote. Because I think if we look at the past few years, we see the result of what potentially could have been avoided, maybe if in Australia we were paying a bit more attention to public affairs and civics. Now, let me just ask you a couple of questions here. I think the transparency report, very, very interesting, and also your recommendations for the how to vote card. So I'm going to ask you two questions in one here. Question number one is, how does the public access these resources? And could you please talk to us a little bit about the process involved in crafting your transparency report reports and also a little bit of the process in relation to the how to vote cards a few questions in one i can uh, i can jog your memory on that if you need me to that awesome um so i just remember that sixth project it's the policy matrix and it's the educational graphics that shows people where parties land on policy now awesome. that first question you asked about um where where we actually get our uh, understanding of 
I'm going to go with the last question. How do the how to vote cards derived? Well, there's three aspects to a how to vote card, both for the lower house and the upper house. The first aspect is the party. What policies are they running on? And that is certainly um, shown in the policy matrix where there's 26 questions that are important to our audience. Our audience is freedom minded, conservative and mostly Christian as well. And so there's 26 questions which run through some of those issues. Um, so that's the first aspect of the party policies. The second one is the candidate themselves. What's their character like? Do they have a history in the community? Um, what's their involvement? Um, are they a ghost candidate? Are they there? Are they not? And then the third aspect is the strategy. And that's the part where people can often get confused. Sometimes we, we pick a strategy to defund the major parties, to actually put a conviction candidate over a major party candidate. And sometimes it's to um, reduce the margin, for example. Some people, they look at Labour and Liberal and they wonder, why is it that Joel's put a conviction candidate and then gone Labour? And it's like, well, I don't do the cards, firstly. My team looks at them and they look, if there's, a, if there's an area that's a, about above 10% in terms of the vote, meaning when it comes down to Labour and Liberal, one party has 60% of the vote, they'll often back the other guy to make it a more marginal seat. When it seats more marginal, the member of parliament that gets elected, they're more inclined to listen to the community and, and actually reply to your emails rather than ignoring you. Um, this was really effective in the federal election. We made a lot of uh, safe seats marginal. And as a result, those members of parliament have been taking freedom-minded people a lot more seriously, particularly in Oxley, for example. That makes perfect sense. And I'm going to display this on the screen and we'll remind the audience before we wrap up, but where can the general public go to access these resources? Yeah, absolutely. So you can go to tpaust.com.au. Um, you can see all of the projects that we've got up there that I mentioned before. And one thing I really need you to guys to do, and I'm really thankful Morgan's had me on here for this interview. I need you to share that link and they wonder why is it that Joel's put a conviction candidate and then gone Labour? And it's like, well, I don't do the cards firstly. My team looks at them and they look, if there's, a, if there's an area that's a, about above 10% in terms of the vote, meaning when it comes down to Labour and Liberal, one party has 60% of the vote, they'll often back the other guy to make it a more marginal seat. When it seats more marginal, the member of parliament that gets elected, they're more inclined to listen to the community and, and actually reply to your emails rather than ignoring you. Um, this was really effective in the federal election. We made a lot of uh, safe seats marginal. And as a result, those members of parliament have been taking freedom-minded people a lot more seriously, particularly in Oxley, for example. That makes perfect sense. And I'm going to display this on the screen and we'll remind the audience before we wrap up, but where can the general public go to access these resources? Yeah, absolutely. So you can go to tpaust.com.au. Um, you can see all of the projects that we've got up there that I mentioned before. And one thing I really need you to guys to do, and I'm really thankful Morgan's had me on here for this interview. I need you to share that link to as many people in your contacts. Even if you're outside the state, we all know someone in New South Wales. And that's one of the best ways you can help me. These are, these are totally free tools. It's just, it's there for the taking. It's all yours. It's the balls in your court. Absolutely. And I'm sure many people appreciate your efforts, Joel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the link is on the screen right now. So write it down, make a note, send a text message out. If we're going to really change politics around in our country, it is going to be at a grassroots level, good old fashioned, talking to your friends and family, sending text messages, talking to your neighbors when you're walking your dog. This is going to be the only way, considering that overwhelmingly big tech is not on our side. Now, Joel, I'm particularly interested in your transparency reports. Could you talk to us a little bit about both the green flags and the red flags that you and your team have been looking out for when checking out the history of some of your sitting MPs? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we did these in Victoria. They were really, they were awesome. Uh, we did one for Dan Andrews and it was as long as my arm, but we did cut it down a bit. And we found that obviously with Dan Andrews, what do you think? You think, all right, he, he introduced, for example, legislation like the permanent pandemic legislation in late 2021, which we all protested against. But there was also things outside Parliament. There was Sludgate. There were the red shirt scandal. There were all these scandals. 
These are the sorts of things we're looking for. It's all public knowledge. It's either documented in the parliament in Hansard or it's reported by a mainstream outlet. So all it is is taking public information and giving it to you guys in a very easy graphic so that you can understand your uh, the report card on your member of parliament. In, in New South Wales, for example, we're working on it right now. I've got, a, I've got a, um, an awesome lady that's doing research on these, looking at Hansard, looking at the bills that were proposed. Tanya Davies is a phenomenal example because she's got both good and bad things on her report. Um, actually, mostly, actually, it's pretty much all good. So now that I think about it. So Tanya Davies, one of the few liberals in um, New South Wales, in 2019, she stood up against abortion to the point that she lost her cabinet position in the Gladys Berejiklian government. And on top of that, during the pandemic in 2021, she, there was a period of time of months where every night she was doing a live stream with her audience. She grew her following from 3,000 to 83,000 followers because she was just talking to the people directly. The, I have the utmost respect for her and what, what she's done, and it's for that reason that her transparency report will actually have mostly green on it. And in fact, she is the first major party candidate where in the federal, in the Victorian and in the New South Wales election, where we're putting a major party candidate above a freedom party candidate. That's how well we've done. We've never done that before in, in the history of our how to vote cards, but she's done so exceptionally well. That is the sort of behavior that we want to reward. We want it to, to, to sort of be retained after this government. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that it's very important to point out that the general public, or at least those who are voting along the side of pro-freedom or conservative, etc., it's not good to focus too much on a brand name because that could very well prompt a certain voter to look past somebody like Tanya Davies, who I remember did a phenomenal job, especially during COVID-19. And we have to, of course, remember, we've got Senator Alex Antic, we've got Gerard Rennick, from the Liberal Party doing a phenomenal jobs. And I think both you and I would probably agree that the general public should get behind those two men. We're saying, don't focus on the Liberal brand name, focus on the person, focus on what they have done and the extent to which they've stuck their neck out, which are, so I do quite appreciate that approach. All righty, now, Joel, I'd like to ask you about a few predictions here. Where do you see this election going in terms of the overall outcome for the lower and upper houses? <sighs> Look, I was a lot more confident about the Victorian prediction, but New South Wales, it's it's going to be tight. Um, we've got a few things going on. It's looking like in the lower house, and whoever gets the majority of seats in the lower house, they pick the Premier. That's all the media care about on election night. It's looking like it's going to be most likely a hung parliament, most likely, probably a Labor win. I think the Liberal Party, they've been in for 10, 11 years, and we've endured lockdowns. I mean, there was at least 100 days of consecutive lockdown in 2021, for example. There was the 12 LGAs of concern. They've racked up a massive, you know, hundreds of billions of dollars in debt. Um, you know, I, I, think, I think that the Liberal Party, especially after the abortion stuff, right after the election, and the fact that they've signed on with, you know, this uh, basically Dan Andrews-style gender fluidity bill, it's looking like the Liberals are going to really find it tough to, to retain government. They're really in a minority government right now as it is. And so it's looking like a hung parliament. It's looking like it'll probably be a Labour premier. But that's the weird thing, though. Uh, Chris Minns might actually lose his own seat. He's the leader of Labour. So we might have a Labour win, but Chris Minns isn't the leader, which is really funny. And it's a massive repudiation of the major parties. Um, he's, he's sitting on the most marginal seat, 0.1%. So that's the lower house. It's looking like hung parliament, most, like, most likely Labor win or a Labor majority. Um, in um, the upper house, it's looking like it's going to be a pretty firm right wing conservative freedom party coalition. Um, it's looking like it's going to be a hung parliament in the upper house and the balance of power will be held by one nation, uh, the Liberal Democrats, IMOP and the Shooters, Farmers, Fishers. Um, We've got a much better set of rules in New South Wales. When you get in, unlike Victoria, you're not in for four years, you're in for eight years. And so every election, only half of the upper house goes for election. We've already got one shooters guy and two One Nation people that are already in there. And we're on track to get another three to five this election. 
And those people will most likely be two to three, one nation, maybe one Liberal Democrat and uh, maybe one IMOP or one shooter. So it's going to be really interesting. A lot of people, uh, when you've got a Liberal Party that's declining, the minor right parties, they it tends to be a bit of a feeding frenzy and they tend to do quite well. Um, and so, yeah, look, that, that's where it seems like it's going. A, a hung parliament left wing in the lower house with Labor winning and a hung parliament in the upper house with the freedom parties, the con conviction parties, controlling the balance of power and uh, basically calling the shots in the state. And I, I very much hope that your prediction is correct, because as many of our members of the audience know and understand, if we have a, a pro-freedom slash conservative balance of power in the upper house, that means bills can be killed, of course, in the upper house, which would be a tremendous win to anybody in New South Wales who is seeking the advancement of the state and seeking to put an end to a lot of these insidious agendas that unfortunately we have bared witness to, uh, particularly over the past few years. Now, Joel, I would like to uh, ask you a question here. Now, to everybody in New South Wales, people who are seeking positive change, people who want expanded freedoms, reduction in government, or people who consider their conservative values have been perhaps trampled over by the Liberal Party, people who are sick of the woke agendas becoming part of our everyday life. What is the advice that you can give to every single person in New South Wales who is tired of all of this garbage so that they can participate and through their efforts contribute towards positive change in this election? Yeah, absolutely. There's probably two or three really simple ways. The first one is get your vote right. If you're not sure who's running in your area, I strongly recommend you checking out how to vote cards at tpaust.com.au. That's the first thing. Also, looking at those cards and sharing them around to as many people as possible. That's the th second thing you could be doing. Having a conversation, having, you know, you probably, you may not agree with 100% the way that we've done the cards, but just slightly alter the card, but please send it on because the starting point for you is often not as good as the majority of normies out there that don't really think about politics. After all, that's why things have gone to crap. It's because people haven't been paying attention to politics. And so this is trying to get us back on track with regards to elections. And the third way, and this is probably one of the more powerful ways to do this after you've sent these how to vote cards to everyone, you go to the volunteer funnel on our page and you connect with your local freedom candidate. We do not keep your information. We pass that straight on to the candidate in your area. You put your name, your number, your email, and your electorate, and we'll connect you with the nearest Freedom Party candidate. There's only one per electorate, pretty much. There's about 30 to 35 areas where there's no Freedom candidate, but most likely there'll be one in the neighbouring electorate. Go help them out. Just rock. Just, just literally send them an email um, through our volunteer funnel, and um, if, if anything, just rock up to the early voting centre over the course of the next week. See if they're there. Say, oh, there's a guy with a, a Liberal Democrats or a One Nation or an IMOP shirt. I want to go volunteer for them. I want to go check them out, you know. And I think that's the best thing you can do. And by the way, guys, if any of you have any questions about this stuff, please send me an email at contact at tpaust.com.au. I'm, I'm here to help. I man that email. I don't have an admin that does it. And so you're talking directly with me. Excellent stuff. So ladies and gentlemen, a recap. Step number one, go to tpaust.com.au. Check out the resources that have been published. Step number two, share this information. Share the resources with your friends and family, anyone you know. Have a conversation with your friends or somebody that you meet at your local shop walking down the street. Remember, polling starts next week. And, um, and finally, the greatest thing you can do to help is put your boots on the ground. That's right. We want to see as many pro-freedom loving New South Wales people at the polling booths as possible. Go and support your favorite party. Now, remember the how to vote cards published by Turning Point. These are a recommendation only. This is not uh, some type of dogma that you must follow. You're free to make up your own choices. The how to vote cards suggestion only. Take these cards. Do your research, find out which party is your favorite, which candidate is your favorite. Dedicate some time. We're talking about only one week out of 52 weeks in a year. Make some sacrifices. If you have some plans, put it off until next week. That's how important it is. And the future of New South Wales, and I dare say the rest of country depends on it. So that's what you need to do. The links are in the description. Now, Joel, before we wrap this up, 
A lot of my audience, of course, are from the uh, Socialist Republic of Victoria. Do you have a final uh, parting message for the people of Victoria before we wrap it up? Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, if you guys want to take a drive, there is a good candidate in Albury, which is on the border of New South Wales and Victoria. You know, perfectly welcome to, to go help that candidate. Um, but also the good news is, guys, and the reason why this election will succeed where Victoria's and the federal fail is Glenn doesn't have as Glenn Drury, as you guys may know, the preference whisperer doesn't have his ten tentacles as deep in New South Wales as Victoria. We don't have group voting tickets. The, the, the voter is in control of the preference, not the parties. And so in New South Wales, we are going to see great success. And just as we saw people starving for a victory when uh, Djokovic won the Australian Open tennis tournament, you're going to see this with New South Wales, but it's going to invigorate the whole of Australia. I've got a ton of plans to do after the New South Wales election to help Queensland, South Australia, WA, Victoria, South Australia once again, but also Tasmania. And I really want to get those things kicked off. But what we need is a big win in New South Wales. And in New South Wales, we're playing on easy mode. Like, we're going to get a huge bang for our buck. Whereas in you guys in Victoria, you were playing on hard mode with elections. And so any help that you can do is hugely appreciated. Once again, why trust me? Why trust the Turning Point Australia brand? I'm strongly recommending that you don't. I'm strongly recommending that you do your own research. And I think anyone that says do your own research is to be trusted. Check out our policy matrix. Check out the, you know, my answers on how these cards are derived and, and look at the seats that, that we've done it in. There's usually a good reason for it. And if you have any doubts, please send me an email. I'm here to help. But we definitely need these shared to as many people as possible. If you know a single person in New South Wales, that link could just translate into hundreds of votes. And that would be amazing. And so, uh, look, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Morgan, for giving me, lending me your platform. Um, I really appreciate it. I, I just want to turn this country around. Excellent stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, that is tpaust.com.au. Go and check it out today. And, Joel, thanks a lot for your time. And we hope to have you back on the show again soon. Thanks very much. Cheers.